Love It Hip Hop Atlanta is back. We got new season, new people, but the same old drama. Leave a hygiene, sitting right, keep that ass up. It's the girl What's up, you guys? Your girl Gigi is here. We have Love It Hip Hop Atlanta. It is back. I mean, from the preview I saw, it's looking like shit is going to pop off with a lot of people this season. There's going to be a lot of hands swinging, a lot of people getting broke up with. It's just a lot, a lot, especially going on with Carly. She's going to reveal a lot that's going on with Mo that she ain't been telling people, okay? But nonetheless, we're going to break down the season, get into it. So let's start off with uh, the start of the episode, which was Jock talking about how basically sometimes it takes the right woman to make a nigga get it right, okay? We see Stevie finally got his act together with Faith. Um, Buck, uh, what's her name? Bambi finally got his shit together with Scrap. We got Jock that's getting locked down by his girl. I can't think of her name right now. But, I mean, ultimately, everybody has found a relationship that's, you know, good for them. Except for Kylie and except for Sierra. Okay, we see Sierra, uh, BK is going to be on some BS this year. Um, but nonetheless, so the episode starts out with uh, Eva, Mimi, uh, talking about, you know, her birthday party. She wanted, like, a safari theme, right? And so everybody showed up. Mimi is saying how her and Stevie are better than ever right now. Mimi looks really good. Her confessional with that blonde honey brown wig. I think that was probably one of the best looks that she had. Her makeup was nice and on the lighter side. I definitely like this confessional look for her. Um, but everybody's showing up to, you know, the safari theme party. Eva is 10 year, 9, 10 years old now. She's growing up. She looks just like God dang Stevie. Uh, we see Bonnie was there. Stevie and Jocelyn go through these phases of being good with each other, then they're not good. Then they're good with each other, then they're not good. I guess at this moment, they're good. They have finally came up with a custody agreement. And even to the point where Mimi and Jocelyn have been, you know, cordial. He actually gave Mimi, uh, Mimi's number to Jocelyn and they talked. And so far, Mimi is no longer Molly the Maid uh, to Jocelyn, okay? So everybody shows up um kirk rashida they're on their 20 years you know uh jock shows up with his girl i really can't think of her name right now but his his fiance but uh kirk uh rashida saw her and was like girl you getting any baby fever she said hell no nah. rashida was like no not one one bitch she said nope not today jock got a lot of kids okay if i was her i would not now be thinking about now have another baby with that nigga okay he is fertile, bro. Girl, you need to be on birth control, okay? But um, the birthday party went off without a hitch. Everybody's actually doing good. Stevie and Mimi's girlfriend seem to be actually on a good foot right now. So far, so good. Who's not good right now is Sierra. This bitch might be going to jail, okay? Sierra is going to um, shoot his son's like little memorial they're doing for him two years since he passed. And she takes her kids there. And she pulls Shooter to the side. Apparently, Sierra is in this legal battle with his baby mama because the bitch is crazy. And she accused Sierra of fighting her at the actual funeral when that's not what happened. She's asking Sierra to, uh, Sierra's asking Shooter to show up to court. And he's like, no, I can't do that for you. She's like, are you serious? Like, I could go to jail for up to a year, like away from my kids, my family, my business. And you can't say nothing. This bitch even put you in jail. He's talking about, oh, well, where were you for me with my son? And where I, you know, I don't go to court. You know, I, I ain't seen nothing. I ain't saying nothing. And she's like tearing up. Cause she's like, are you for real right now? Like, you know, I didn't do nothing. You saw everything. And even in the confessional shooter was like, oh, you know, I know Sierra didn't start nothing, but I told myself I would never step foot in the court unless I, uh, uh if it had nothing to do with me, nigga, you foul. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. Yo, baby mama, somebody that you got a child with is getting ready to go to jail for something she didn't do. And you have the power control to control that. And you can't even do that. You can't even say two words in her favor, especially for a bitch that puts you in jail too. Like, bro, you are so messed up. This is why you can't fuck with these hood niggas. She said, oh, you too strict to step in the courtroom. Okay, forget you then. So she walks off crying because she's like, shit, I really might go to jail. Okay. So Mama D, y'all, Mama D is having some health scares. She can't drop the liquor. She can't put it down. And Scrappy is begging her too, okay? He's like, Mama D, she's been having a lot of surgery. She needs to get it together. And she did a breathalyzer because Scrap ain't playing. He said, but you're going to breathe into this tube. She did, and it says 0% right now. Now, Mama D looked like she done lost some weight for sure. 
Um, and her wig looks pretty good. Okay, in the confessional, she looked decent. And she's saying that she loves her family, so she's gonna put the liquor down. But for the preview, it's looking like, yeah, Mama D just can't drop that henny hen hen. Um, we see Jock and his girl go to a little dog shop because he wants to get a puppy for his twin girls. Now, he's trying to talk to her about the puppy, but she's trying to talk to him about this vasectomy. She wants that nigga to get snipped. He got too many kids. She don't want none. Or at least know with him, rather. But he's kind of feel like, man, why is he like, ever since I proposed to you, like, you looking a little off. Like, what's been going on? She calls him, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, I just can't do it. You know, all these kids. She's like, I'm asking you because, look, I forgot to take my birth, control, uh, my birth control today. And we just can't be having, you know, situations like that. Now, for me, it's like, bitch, get you an IUD or whatever the little bars are that you put in your arm that's supposed to be 99.99%, you know, effective. Why don't you get one of those and call it a day? But I think she's just so helping on him getting snipped as a reason to kind of think of, to make it seem like oh if he's not willing to do this for me then I don't think I could commit to him she I think she's looking for a way out y'all I really do I think she has one foot out the door and she's just looking for that one reason to step her other foot out uh but he can't believe that he's even asking her to do this okay first of all y'all went to Petland didn't y'all know Petland was on the damn news for actually being run by puppy mills why would people go to freaking uh dog pounds no more to adopt a dog all them homeless ass dogs y'all be spending fifteen hundred dollars fifteen thousand dollars on these pets these bougie ass dogs that's from puppy meals and shit like i can't stand people who do that y'all ain't really no animal lovers but that's a different story um so sierra bk bambi and scrap go like on a little double date to the ice skating ring and everything's good so far but then sierra breaks down to ba bambi looks good y'all i love that little corset that she had on with that army green jacket it was cute um but she's telling her this whole court situation how she's disappointed that shooter won't even like be considered enough to take to take up for her in court and this nigga actually in the confessional had to call the nerve to call her selfish at the at the state at the bowling alley to my oh she knows how i feel about court how and she wasn't even there for my son it's so selfish of her oh selfish of her are you kidding me Niggas make me sick the way they logic things about when a woman can do so much for them and y'all want to hold this little bitty thing over them. You didn't do this for me for my son. Your son unfortunately has passed away. I'm sorry. It's a hard thing, but there's nothing she can do about it. But you can do something about her going to jail. That's what you can do. So riddle me that. How is that so selfish enough for the mother of your kid? You can't help her out. So she's crying. She's like, I can't believe that I really might be going to jail for a year because nobody's willing to stick up for me. Uh, BK's on the side talking to Scrap about, you know, how he understands what he's going through with Mama D because he lost his dad to his, his kidney failure because he couldn't put the alcohol down. That's the last thing that Scrap wants for his mama. So Kirk and Rashida, y'all, they are back. They are better than ever, apparently. We all see that they have made it 20 years or whatnot. And... Rashida, you a better the bitch than me because I'm sorry, all the shit that Kirk done did, I'd have been gone. Okay, he has done some foul, had a whole ass baby on you, Rashida, and I get that you know y'all gonna stick through marriage and stuff, but he didn't give a fuck about y'all marriage. He's out there fucking with that stripper, was he? I don't think so. But they got this restaurant, and then they got their kids working the restaurant, which obviously is not a good idea because them kids. I ain't understanding what worth ethic and you know actually having money what it entailed because they grew up in a bougie ass lifestyle they didn't grow up struggling like Kirk and Rashida so they don't feel like they need to work as hard they got a son who's sitting there ordering his food before he's getting food out to the actual customers like the fuck they need to be put in some type of like crash course for management bartending or whatever if you want to actually pass that restaurant down to them you can't just pass it down to them because their last name is Frost Cause that shit is going to, it's going to go up in flames because these kids aren't taking it seriously. And she had to talk to her son. Like, look, me and your dad are hard on you, but y'all need to be because we're looking to pass it down to one of you guys these days. But unfortunately her son is too focused on the ass of the servers. The daughter is popping off on people cause she, you know, has no filter. And then the other son, he's in the back hungry, hungry as can be. He's probably showing up to work high and having the munchies. So y'all need to get that shit under control because she's already talking about they got Yelp reviews of people complaining about they can't get their 10-piece chicken wing on time. So y'all better get that shit fixed or y'all shit's going to be shut down ASAP. 
So, um, Kirk and Rashida, though, are talking about how her mama apparently just stole one of her vendors to provide her with clothes. And that's why her Houston location ain't really doing that well. She was supposed to be getting paid a good amount of money to run that shop. And she basically, like, took advantage of it and started running her own clothes. Now, mama, what about that makes sense? You getting paid to work at your daughter's shop. Like, first of all, why do you, what plus size clothes are you selling that can't be put in your daughter's shop? Like, I'm a little confused. Now, Kirk feels a way about it. We all know Kirk and Rashida's mama got a love-hate relationship. That bitch ran over his dirt bike, okay? She ain't playing when it comes to Rashida, but it's kind of foul what she is doing. And because it is her mama, Rashida's handling it with a little more care. But Kirk is telling her, look, you need to handle it as if it was anybody else because your mama fucked up. Um, So, uh, what's her face? Takes Jock to get the... um vasectomy done now he's in the room like doc i can't do this no i'm not doing it after he's after the doc shows him okay we're gonna lift your nuts up we're gonna snip under here like niggas be making it so extra when it comes to get a vasectomy a woman's recovery time is way longer than a man getting a vasectomy y'all literally all you gotta do is take a viking in they knock y'all out a little bit make two snips and y'all is done a whole woman has to get her tooth tied or burned off however they do it and it's like a couple, it's a whole like almost week of recovery. But she's looking at him like, Jocelyn, like you can't do this for me. But I, Jocelyn was like, look, um, bitch, if you don't want no kids, why can't you get your tubes tied? Now she kind of came off a little spicy when she was like, look, you want kid number nine and 10 when you're already struggling to split your time between the ones you got? I said, damn. I said, ooh, ooh. And that, that stuck job because he's like why are you saying it like that why are you making it seem like i don't take care of my kids and she's like i'm not she's like you be with your kids but let's keep a real job the, the business that you do and the, the amount of money that you make that you're gonna need to make to take care of those kids is going to until you not being able to spend enough time equally with eight motherfucking kids okay eight kids and they all in different states and different baby mamas and stuff like that you got like four or five different baby mamas so Yes, all your kids are not getting time. Let's not, let's just knock it out what it is. Say it is for what it is. You are not spending that much time with all your kids equally. Like that's the truth. And I think he knew that. And that's why it stung so much to hear her say that. Because the fact that she's realizing it makes her understand that if we have a kid, you're not going to be for my, there for my kid, you know, fully like you need to be. But I just think that old girl is not trying to be tied down to Jock in any way, shape, or form. Yes, she might want to be married, and yes, she loves Jock, but she knows that shit might not end, not be, you know, all there, all fairy tale land, and you know, happily ever after. I don't think it's gonna be that, and she knows that too. So she's not trying to have no type of reason to be locked down to that nigga. Um, but they get into an argument about it. He ain't like it. He's like, you can get your tubes tied if that's the case. And she could, but she's not going to get her tubes tied because she wants a kid, but not with your ass. Okay. So then let's get to, um, Kirk and Rashida's, um, little, uh, uh, anniversary party. It's the 20th. Everybody's so happy for them. Y'all, the stuff that they've been through, a lot of couples, most of the time, ain't going to go through that. But other half of the people like, Rashida, you stupid. How can you stay with a man that had a baby on you? But then the other half are like, oh, you know, it's a marriage. That's what marriage is. Working through all the hard times, being there for that person. My question is, how much is working on your marriage, going through the ups and downs, how much is that is your responsibility in a marriage? How much of it as a wife is it your responsibility to go through those tough times? Like what kind of tough times is it that is a good enough excuse to leave your marriage you know like for me having a baby on me is my way out you is not going to go impregnate another bitch and think i'm gonna stay because i'm your wife and we supposed to work on it because that's what our vows were the fuck i am and especially all the stuff before that he didn't already cheat on you before that stuff too like bitch Kurt, rashida you strong but everybody's there carly actually shows up and sierra's asking her to be there for her at the courtroom because she needs somebody there for her now carly says she's been going through a lot of shit nobody knows that she's been through a rough time bitch what did you do to your lips like you and sierra both y'all must have went to the same ass doctor ladies why please stop putting these fillers 
in your mouth. I guess Mo did a number on her, making her feel insecure. Because you know, already blew your ass up. Now you're blowing your lips up. You look like you can barely talk. Like, the shit looks like it hurts to even smile, Carly, okay? But she tells Sierra she gonna be there for her. But she's also like, oh, but I feel like she should be there for me. I feel like she hasn't been there for me like a real friend should be. But you're not telling nobody what you're going through, Carly. You can't be mad at people for not being there for you when they don't know what they need to be there for you. Like, what it is they need to be there for you. Like, I, if I'm Sierra and you're not telling me what the fuck is wrong with you, I'm gonna think you okay. But she said she's gonna be there for her. But from the preview, it looked like she basically sold Sierra a dream. Now, Alexis Sky, for some reason, shows up. Now, Alexis, that bitch is back. She talking about, oh, I came back from New York after, you know, I got sold a dream about my music, but that was just a phase. And that, you know, the type of bitches I can't stand. Y'all little Instagram thoughts, y'all getting this phase of, oh, I've always loved music, I wanna be in music. Bitch, just because you like music doesn't make you an artist, okay? You went up there because you thought music was going to be your get, your get rich quick scheme. And because shit didn't work out, whatever is new, Trey Way went to jail. Then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, that was just a phase. But then when you was doing, when you was doing music, it was like, oh my God, I've always loved music. Bitches like y'all get on my nerves. Because when people who are genuinely into music, that's like, they live, eat, sleep, shit music, okay? And y'all be taking up their goddamn hard earned time and money just because y'all got a little bit of following and y'all show your ass on the internet 24 7 like i can't stand alexa sky you just so full of it you in this damn fight that you having with ari right now it's so extra it's so unnecessary y'all just got in the club and didn't even fight after all that shit y'all was talking on the internet like oh and there you are doing that shit with carly so then she shows up uninvited uninvited her aunt akbar big and tall ass y'all Akbar a big bitch, okay? I would not want to fight her. She could be big and tall for women. The uh, spokesperson for big and tall women, double XL. She came in there with a whole goddamn chinchilla on her sleeves and stuff. The jacket was cute though, um, but she just too big to wear that shit. So Alexis come in and Rashida's like, hey, you get a drink? And she's like, yeah, but Alexis got a bone to pick with Carly because apparently Carly said that she was going to spit on her and her mama. Now, apparently Mo was dating Alexis before Carly. Now, my question is, how do you niggas all date the same women in the same type of circle? Like, I'm just confused. How did y'all always seem to manage to date the bitches that seem to hang around the same type of friend group? I'm confused. Do y'all not go around talking like, hey, do you know this girl? Do you know this girl? But I guess Mo actually gave Carly the ring that he proposed or, or was going to give Alexis with. Now, Mo, if that is true, nigga, you fucked up. That's so messed up. Um, but she walks in, takes her shoes off, and then tries to run up on Carly. Now, bitch, Alexis, you really ain't about it because you had ample space and opportunity and time to run up on Carly if fighting her is really what you wanted to do. You wanted to make a scene. You wanted to make a TV moment. You really didn't want to fight that bitch because you could have ran up on her. Now, Carly's sitting there like, oh, really, you want to fight with me? What's the problem? And she gets behind her. They start throwing drinks. Carly's like, bitch, this is my town. This is my city. Uh, you don't want nothing with me. And Rasheed's mad because she's like, first of all, bitch, I ain't invite you. Secondly, you here to come to this ghetto hood red ass shit, mess up my event. Like, can I have one thing to myself? Um, And everybody's confused, like, why these two bitches are fighting? Akbar over there got to drink water because she said she just got the little gastric sleeve thing done. She said, ah, I can't drink. I just had my sleeve done. So hopefully she might lose a little bit of weight. She might, you know, not be big and tall no more. She might just be medium and tall next time. Um... But Alexis, you so full of it. Y'all bitches really ain't about swinging them hands. Y'all just talk too much. Y'all want to do everything for camera time. Because if you bitches really want to fight, y'all would meet up off camera, fight, and that'd be it. But y'all don't. Y'all always wait till it's time for cameras to pull up to make a whole scene. Carly's old big busted lip ass. Talk about bitch, you don't want it. Oh, you uh, I like, I, 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 like, oh, whatever. Ain't y'all ain't neither one. Y'all go throw hands over to each other. And that's what the episode ends, you guys. But Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, I'm excited for it to come back because I was totally getting over Love and Hip Hop New York because that shit was just boring. It was garbage. And I'm excited to see what this season brings. We got some new people like Light Skin Keisha. I've seen her on the internet before. Um, and Paul Sierra, she might be going, you know, go to jail. Clink, clink, clink. Um, but y'all tell me what you think about this first episode and what you expect the season to be like. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to your girl's channel, like this video, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Deuces.